Welcome to the weekend and welcome to Devil's Advocate. I'm Amy Oliver Cook, Executive Vice President of the Independence Institute. I also have the pleasure of being the director of the Energy Policy Center. Tonight, we've got two topics for you. In a few minutes, you're gonna hear from Krista Kafer from the Independent Women's Forum about messaging to women because this election season, everybody wants them. Krista is gonna talk to us about how we actually message to women. Right now though, hydraulic fracturing. I have to admit, I'm one of those mothers in love with fracking, and I'm talking hydraulic fracturing the process that we use to extrapolate natural gas and oil from the ground. It's, a product, it's an old process that we've had here in Colorado and something that has really conjured up some controversy over really the last couple of years. With me is my associate in the Energy Policy Center. We have Donovan Schaefer, who's actually written a great paper. He's, he's an engineer, a petroleum engineer, and I'm gonna hold this up so hopefully everybody can see it. This is Frack Attack. It is the paper that has just been released. It's readable. Yes, an engineer wrote a readable paper, and Donovan, thanks so much for being here. Thank you very much for having me. Um, it's my pleasure, and uh, it's been a great opportunity to put this kind of information together and get it out to the public. Now, you are actually a petroleum engineer. No, uh -huh, that's right. And so you've got a little bit of knowledge of hydraulic fracturing. Yeah, um, I spent three years after um, undergraduate working in West Virginia, uh, working in hydraulic fracturing, fracturing the Marcellus Shale. Um, so, you know, I've, I've been on the ground with the steel toe boots on, with the hard hat on, out there amid everything that's going on. And so I, I'm... Uh, Wait a I'm, second, you've been out there? Yes. Then aren't you, you, you should be a, a, a toxic waste dump, isn't that? I mean, that's sort of the impression yeah, that we get. Right, that, no. That you should, you should have some, some form of cancer or your sure. respiratory problem all or the, something. Uh, all yeah. the other workers are just limping around, barely, yeah. you know, zombies on the well sides. <laughs> because. <laughs> get rain glowing, glowing yeah. with there's some a, kind there's of radiation. A yellow Let's yeah. get it, because yeah. one of the, the great things, it's cracking the case against hydraulic fracturing. Mm. Hydraulic fracturing is not new, though. No. Yeah, and this is a really, this is something that I explain in the paper. Um, and it's really easy to get confused for m most people in the public because on the one hand, you have the industry saying that it's the oldest, you know, we've been doing it since the 40s. And on the other hand, you have environmental groups and people against fracking saying that, you know, it's untested, it's not proven, it's a new thing. and. The reason for that confusion is that it's, it's an old proven technology, but it's being applied in a new way. Explain. So before, uh, before this kind of we call the shale revolution or this unconventional revolution, all of the formations, the, the rock layers that companies would go after to get oil and gas, they were really porous uh, rocks like sandstone that the oil and gas could actually flow through it. Most people think oil and gas is in these giant pools, but it's not. It's in solid rock and the sandstone, it all flows really, really easily. Back in the 40s, they discovered that if they did hydraulic fracturing, they could even add on top of that and make it flow better. But it was never actually turned to, uh, applied to things like shales where they'd really not gotten production from them in the past. So they've learned how to extrapolate natural gas from rock formations that previously they were not able to get, utilize or get, they, they just couldn't get to it before. Yeah, exactly, it's just. So it's an old technology it. in a new formation. It's been so perfected that can finally turn to these really marginal things and they turn out to be prolific once they get the right sort of recipe. So what is, because we hear this all the time, um, you know, hydraulic fracturing is, um, it can be dangerous, there are risks involved. It, certainly it's not 100% risk free. Yeah, um, as, far as, as far as human health goes, as far as the actual health of living, breathing human beings, you know, the, the general public, it is. Like, it really is fully safe. And by the um, way, I live in Weld County where we have yeah. 18,000 natural gas wells. Yeah. And 90% of them are hydraulically fractured and have been for years. Yeah. Uh, and we still have kids and stuff too that yeah. run around in Wells County. Uh, well, you know, the thing there. that you have to say, and, and this is just true, is that, uh, and if, you, if I don't admit this, everybody's going to think I'm just completely full of baloney, but you can have natural gas contamination. You can have 
a specific kind of contamination that's not caused by fracking. It's caused by the drilling operation itself. And so whether you fracked or not, you can have this issue. So you can still have human error. You can have that kind of human error, but again, even, you know, it's, it's, there's two separate parts. There's the drilling down part, mm -hmm. and if you don't do it well, you can have little things that will leak up from shallower formations, you know, maybe a thousand feet deep and get into an aquifer. But all the fracking stuff that's happening down at 5,000 feet or so, never have a problem with that. That's why you only see methane, you only see natural gas. Chemists can do this kind of fingerprinting on it, and they see it only comes from these shallow formations. And the great thing is that methane is not carcinogenic, it's not toxic. To my knowledge, no human being has ever been harmed by natural gas contaminating a natural gas well. Um, if anybody, I, I am wanting to know all this information, so if anybody has a specific story to the contrary, please post a comment or send me some information or something. But to my knowledge, no human being has ever been impacted by that. Let's go to, through a couple of things. A couple mm -hmm. of things we hear in Colorado, water. Right. Water, two things. One, is, is there water contamination? Can my water be contaminated by hydraulic fracturing? Again, it's just the natural gas stuff. Okay. And, and a lot of that is already there. A lot of it's natural. Um, for anyone who's seen the documentary Gasland, um, the Colorado Oil and Gas Conservation Commission, they, uh, they looked into a lot of those claims um, in Weld County, Garfield County, in Weld County. Two, there were three cases. Two of the three were completely natural. They had uh, so it wasn't caused by the hydraulic fracturing itself. No, it was it was inherently in there okay. in the aquifer. Okay. So was it, what yeah. about um, the fracking fluid itself? The fracking fluid, um, you know, it has very small concentrations of these of chemicals. Some of them can be harmful, but they're in such dilute concentrations. So um, anyone that's concerned about fracking, I urge you always keep your eyes open for the word benzene. Um, benzene comes up again and again and again, and benzene is a dangerous chemical in a significant concentration. But when it's super duper tiny concentration, it's not really a problem. We are breathing benzene right now. Oh my gosh. Everybody in this room, every, Clear out. every human being that lives on the planet Earth as we know it, breathes in and exhales some concentration of benzene. But we're okay with that. You know, it occurs naturally. We had forest fires recently. Yeah. Um, you know, when a tree burns, it releases some amount of benzene. So, so it depends on the level, it, 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 and have we seen levels that have been high enough to be problematic in Colorado? No, we have not. Um, there, are, we, what we've seen, we see levels that will maybe be right about at some EPA limit, or maybe a little bit above it. But what we don't ever do is we never stop to ask ourselves, what do the EPA limits mean? What do they correspond to? Um, the EPA limits have so many risks and so many things hedged into them. So, for example, um, if benzene is found in, in someone's water well uh, at the EPA limit, you know, where it's the considered mm -hmm. sort of a dangerous level, that is related to a one thousandth of a percentage increase in the likelihood of that person developing cancer. And that's assuming they're exposed at that concentration consistently for a period of 70 years. This is incredibly unlikely in the case of benzene because benzene is an organic chemical and it is biodegradable. So it's not, you know, if you find it once at that level, you're not going to find so it at not, that level. So it's not one of these things that later. has a half-life of 50,000 years. Mm -mm. Okay. No, it has a half-life of about six months or so. <laughs> yeah. Let's get back to water. One of the other things we hear here in Colorado is the oil and gas industry, hydraulic fracturing uses way too much water. We can't afford it, especially we're in a drought year. This, you're right, this is the number, this is, to me intuitively, water contamination sounds more concerning, at least get that fear. Um, but given the way that Colorado is, a western state, it does get less water. This is probably the number one objection that we get. Um, but it's just one that people, get confused by how big all the numbers are. You know, you hear that a hydraulic fraction can use five million gallons of water, and that sounds like a lot, and it is kind of a lot for you and me. You know, we shower, we brush our teeth, we use a little bit of water each day, but um, that five million gallons is really, is incredibly tiny when compared to all of the water that's used within the state. Um, the Colorado Department of Water Resources did a study on this, and they projected out to the year 2015, assuming that hydraulic fraction would keep going and growing and growing and growing, that it would only be using, um, I think it was, uh, it was 10 hundredths of a percent, so 0 0.01 
percent of all of the water used in Colorado, not even all of the water that can be used or all of the water that falls, you know, through rainfall, but just of what we actually use. And you have a great chart in here, and I would encourage everybody to go to the Independence Institute website and read Frack Attack. But you have a great chart in here that talks about water use, usage, and you actually compare it to other yeah. usages in the state, including yeah. things like snow making, right. which, which uses a significant amount of water. Yeah. There is, um, and of course, the, the majority of our water usage is in agriculture. Yes. And again, I go back to Weld County, which is the seventh largest agricultural county in the country, the only one outside of California yeah. that is in the top 10. We use a lot of water. We also have, we hydraulically fracture. We, uh, I mean, those are competing interests, but they well, seem yeah. to have been able to coexist. And they seem like competing interests, but they're not. Because what people forget is that natural gas is the biggest input when it comes to fertilizer manufacturing. Um, when oh, they make okay. nitrogen, ammonia-based. So they need based, it. They need cheap natural gas. The cheaper the natural gas is, the cheaper the fertilizer costs are for farmers. Hydraulic fracturing uses one one thousandth of what's using for agriculture. So the oil and gas companies really just have to basically bid away in these markets one one thousandth of what agriculture uses, and that's going to have a huge depressing impact on the price of fertilizer for the farmers. So at the end of the day, I would say that farmers really come out ahead. Wow. All right, let's talk about one other thing that you mentioned. And by the way, again, read Frack Attack. We need hydraulic fracturing. Without hydraulic fracturing, can we have a natural gas and an oil shale industry in Colorado? No, uh, we can't. Um, you can't even have uh, even a lot of the conventional stuff that was around before all the shale boom and everything. Um, you know, without fracking, even a lot of that wouldn't even be sort of economical uh, or wouldn't be profitable because you have to remember that um, the more quickly you can get something, the more valuable it is today. So if I said, Amy, I'm going to give you um, $100,000, but I'm going to give you to you in tiny payments over the next 100 years. Or if I wanted, if I offered to give you $100,000 today that you could walk away with, you know, which would you want? Which one's more useful, more meaningful to you? So we need hydraulic fracturing, and I guess the point being, if we don't have hydraulic fracturing, you're not going to have natural gas and oil shale, and mm. then you're going to have to come up with some other solution. Sure. And you do a great job making this point that we're not, you know, at the Independence Institute, we are... Um, we're, we're agnostic. We're, we're agnostic on energy. And I have no objections to nuclear. Um, I think that those are great alternatives. But when you talk about hydraulic fracturing, if you're not going to do that, and you're talking to people who are also opposed to nuclear and other forms of energy, and they just think we're going to do everything on solar and wind, it's just not going to happen. I'm sorry. Donovan, thanks so much for being here. It's a great paper. Check out Frack Attack at energy.i2i.org. Stay tuned. Krista Kafer and Messaging to Women up next.